Hi everyone, it's me Cheryl. I hope you're all alright. I know it's been a while again, but I've been finishing objects for you to show you. Where to start? Okay, I think I will start with some, I thought I'll do some stash busting stuff. So I fished out a single skein of yarn from a yarn box. It was King Cole, Riot Chunky, and then Hit Ravelry. I typed in under yarns, the yarn section, King Cole, Riot Chunky. And I want to see what projects people had made with it. I also, because I only had a single skein, I adjusted the meterage and the yardage just to focus down on the objects because I didn't want anything too big. There was a lot of hats and stuff, but I didn't want to do a hat. Okay. Anyway, I spotted this pattern. Somebody did um, a lollipop shawl, which is written by Frankie Brown. You know Frankie Brown who does the 10 stitch blanket? All right. They managed to do it. now, and that lollipop shawl is in when Frankie did the pattern. It's in um, Knit Picks Chroma fingering weight, but this person had done it in um, King Cole Riot Chunky, which is fine. And I made sure to look at the pattern notes to make sure that they definitely used only one skein. And so I started to do it. Um, luckily, Frankie Brown gives you the the height of it and the, the width of it, the wingspan. So I knew I would need fewer stitches than Frankie did, I think. She said increased to 80, I think. I didn't go anywhere near that. I just followed, I just measured. And then um, as I was getting to halfway, I realized, I don't know how this person did this with one skein of yarn, I need another one. So I had to go and buy another skein of yarn. Unfortunately, it's not the same dye lot. <laughs> But anyway, it turned out all right, and here it is. Oh, that's it curled over a bit at the back. Actually looks quite good there. Um, and it... There. It's so lovely the way it's done. I think I would like to do it in the fingering, because I do happen to have some chroma. And there we are. So it's, it's like a little scarflet. But it took two skeins, not one. <sighs> that was somewhat misleading. I'm supposed to be doing a, a de stash thing. You know, st sorry, no, a, I'm supposed to be doing a, a, a stash bust, and it was somewhat misleading. That was silly. I should do it the other way. <laughs> I'm not a model. Nor do I play one on TV. There you go. I can't really see very well, it's, you're quite far away. How does that look? Does it look alright? Got some muscles in my arms doing that, right. It's a good exercise that. Yeah, I should try that more often. Probably break the chair though. <laughs> anyway, so that's that. Um, can you tell it's a different dye lot? Um, if you go through. Where does it start changing? Hang on, if I do this, wait a minute. I think you'll be able to tell now. Look at these two. I think these two are meant to be the same colour. Different dye lot. Oh well, never mind. It turned out fine and it's a very nice pattern. And I would do it with a different yarn, I think. And it's a free pattern, by the way, FYI. So, yeah, go for it if you like it. And the one that Frankie Brown's done, that colour, Excuse me, computer, don't go black. Um, it's actually fine. It's, it's quite a lovely colour. It's, I don't know what she used exactly. I know she used Knit Picks Chrome Fingering, but it doesn't actually say what colour, but it's got like pinks and yellows and blues in it. It's quite nice. Yeah, I like that. I made another hat and you're going to think, that's a loom hat. You've done that before, Cheryl. I know. Just move along. Ah, there's a difference. There's a difference. Because the last few loom hats I've been doing on a Cindy Wood loom, which is 5 8 inch gauge, and uh, it's 48 pegs. Well, I invested in an X loom, but I decided to get the half inch. Because I noticed when I was looking at the Siege's hats, it's actually doing the same thing on here anyway. You can see the ladders between each stitch. I don't know why it's doing it on that one. So 
I of course I had to do a gauge swatch on both the 48 peg 5 8 inch and this half inch because I knew the hat size would be different and I knew I needed to figure it all out so what I managed to figure it out as first of all 56 pegs right and I should have continued with that but somehow in there when it was further back this bit I'd somehow dropped a stitch because I'm still trying to figure out how to use it. It's a bit awkward for me at the moment, but I think it just needs practice. And I dropped a stitch and I thought, oh. and I, I did try and rectify it by going back and it didn't work. So I took it off and I'd only done a few rows and then I put it on my head and it slid straight down. And I thought, oh, 56 pegs is way too much then. I think I might have, should have just waited for it to, you know, on the loom, it's really big. But as you, the more you knit it shrinks i don't think that was enough rolls to actually figure it out so what i did anyway instead of doing 56 i did 52 pegs and there's a reason why it's on this head rather than the male head the male head is about average size for men and women really this one's more like a young child so it's smaller but also i figured Fine here on this hat for a child. But if I was doing an adult one, I would need more pegs. I would need maybe I'd definitely try the 56 again. But I also would need where is it? It's on the other side, I think. Yeah, I think I would need more rows because when I finished it, I had more yarn left over than expected. I made a pom pom, and I still had some yarn left over in it. It just didn't feel when I tried it on my head. It was very tight. Didn't it didn't feel long enough? It needed to be a little bit longer in the height, hat height. So that's what I would need to do next time, regardless of whether I did the 52 pegs or the 56 pegs. I would still need to make it a little bit longer, I think. Yeah, just a couple of rounds, but it was all right. It was an experience. I just need practice at it. But really, I think that this yarn. A little, little, little bit too thick, and that is the equivalent of Michael's Loops and Threads Charisma. That is Charisma the colorway, or is it just the whole yarn brand? I don't know, but they're very similar to this, and it's a little bit too thick for the one inch. It, it's okay, but it's, it's fiddly, especially when you come to do the brim. Anyway, that was a learning experience, so at least I know. To increase the amount of stitches, say for example if I wanted to make an adult hat, and definitely increase the amount of rows. And just figure out how to get into, sometimes getting into here was a bit awkward. Not always, but it was mainly here. But it's just, I think it's just practice. In theory, this is brilliant. You know, make a good boomerang, do you think? Actually, it's quite heavy. <laughs> I'm thinking, I wonder if they would make, um, eventually, a sock yarn size out of it because I know they do the they do the five eighths, they do the half inch, and is it three eighths? But I wonder if they're gonna eventually go down to the one quarter inch and do a sock one. That'd be interesting. Mind you, I've never knitted a sock on a loom. I've really tried. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong thing to say. I've knitted a slipper sock. I mean, a proper um, a shoe sock, finger and weight sock. It's just taking too long. I'm quicker on the needles <laughs> but I want to get me practicing now just in case I can't use needles anymore in the future I can lose, use a loom and if I'm practiced at it already it won't be a struggle when I have to learn that way that's if it ever comes to that I don't know if it's going to never mind next thing I want to show you is a pair of socks and I need to wash these but it's beautiful that's lovely though isn't it now I'll show you the other one, which is not on a thing. There we go. Now this is amazingly soft yarn. Oh, it feels, that's what's left over. It's from Hobby, which is H-O-B-B-I-I. -I. You may have seen the adverts around. This yarn, World of Yarn, Wallong. 63% acrylic, 30% bamboo, and 7% elastane. And it's so soft. There's no wool in there. 
So I just thought, I want to try that. So I got about four skeins, I think, of different colours. And it was lovely to work with. My husband has tried them on, even though he's not going to get them for either his birthday or for Christmas. So do you not get them these yet, by the way? He goes, I know, don't worry. But he's got loads of socks to wear anyway, and he loves my socks. So. They were really, really nice to knit with, I have to say. I just didn't feel any difference between wool and this. So if you are um, allergic to wool or a low tolerance to wool, this could be a really good alternative. And also, where is it? I saved a bit. Oh, that's too small. There we go, that'll do. This is a, a bit of the end I've just chopped off after sewing it in. Look how elastic that is. Oh my god, that's 7% Seven percent elastin. That is amazing. I'm really impressed. That is amazing, absolutely amazing. So I'm happy with how that turned out. But I'm getting loads of these floating around and they're not enough to make a full pair of socks. I might be able to make one. Now I know my youngest son loves auto socks and I don't want to make a sock yarn blanket because you've got this thing hanging around forever accumulating and you're just waiting for bits to add to it just like that square blanket I've got down there which I haven't knitted any squares for ages on it the corner to corner square one <sighs> so I thought what I'd do I've got a couple of skeins of yarn which are a bit fairly neutral one's grey and I think one's like a a beigey sand colour. I can use them for heels and toes and just mix it all up and my younger son will absolutely love them. In fact my husband said he'd like them as well so I hey, can use it up that way but I may have to invest in just some plain sock yarn just to add those effects but the only way I was able to properly achieve a good looking heel was top down but I want to knit toe up now. Now I know how to finish it off properly on the cuff. I wanted it tore up, but I was having difficulty because if you've seen one of my videos, oh, I can't remember which one, but it's where I did with Opal 6 ply, and it, so it's more like a, a slipper sock, and I just matched them up. It was my younger son's odd pair of socks. Well, I did the heel in a different colour, but it was just the heel, this part, the heel flap. It wasn't the heel turn, and it looked really odd. And the reason why I couldn't do it is because the sock I was doing, the Harlow pattern, once you've done the heel turn, it takes you all the way around the sock before you start the heel flap. But then I saw um, Zoe from 24 Carat Crochet. She's been doing top socks for ages and she manages to do the heel flap and the heel turn and I thought, was she able to do that? So I emailed her and I messaged her, I said, what, may I ask what pattern you're using? And she said it was Nathan's pattern, sock petition. So I went and bought it. I had to figure out what it was doing because it was in the maths, of course, and I love that. I love the number crunching. And I did. I go mad when my husband just stops in the middle of a sentence and I've just gone and done the same thing. Now, I don't know if anybody else does this. Does anybody else do this? I've got just two scrap bits of yarn and I basically made I just cast on a couple of rounds and I did the heel turn and the heel flap on sock, using sock petitions um, pattern. I know it's rather big, it was just a, a prototype I was messing about. But it worked out really well. And I needed to do it in different colours because that's exactly what I intended to do. Different colour just for that heel turn and heel flap. I can't be the only one who does this. Please tell me I'm not the only one who does this because I'm feeling crazy right now. <laughs> but yeah, I'm really happy with that. So next time I make a pair of top socks, I'm going to um, do the using up old your sock yarn, leftover sock yarn, like this kind of thing, for example. I'm going to do this, the sock petition pattern, so I can do that with a plain yarn. And that's where I'm going to use up my sock yarn. Next, I'm going to have to insert a couple of pictures here right now because what's happening is um, where we go to Knit and Natter now, which is in a coffee shop within a department store, uh, one of the ladies came up to us and mentioned that 
one of her relatives had a baby and the short on hats and what we'd like to you know so we, we don't mind helping out but she mentioned traffic light hats and to me traffic light hats are for premature babies having said that I know there are babies in special care um, who are actually term because Christopher was term but he aspirated meconium so eh, yeah there are full size babies in special care as well however um, we, all, we all seem to be using the same patterns which is Mariana Lazy Daisy Days uh, or otherwise known as Mariana Mel on Ravelry and she does loads of free patterns um, my co my co workers my knit and natter friends seem to be doing um, the newborn size whereas I'm doing the preemie sizes and I've done several as you can see already I did several um, crochet hats and a couple of knitted ones and here's some more which just need the pom poms on and that's a knitted one. I think that this one's Unity. Now, I prefer to knit in the round. And Mariana's patterns are back and forth. So, I first of all did it on Excel. I charted it normally and then I charted it in the round. But then um, I realised I'm a member of Stitch Fiddle, but I'm a free member. Well, I was a free member. And I thought, oh, this is so much easier than trying to do this on the spreadsheet. Um, it, it was just much easier to navigate so I did invest in the annual 18 euros for the 12 months and luckily they don't auto renew and if you don't auto renew for a while you can go back to it in a few years time and your stuff is still there in the cloud they've said that and I think that's absolutely wonderful so what I'm doing is charting Mariana's patterns in the round for me to knit it in the round and I've done it it works and I'm, I'm doing the smaller sizes so I'm doing a premium size as well. My friends are doing the other sizes and that's fine. We're all co we're covering all bases then, aren't we? But uh, I had to start... This was the normal pom-pom size for the larger hats. That might go on there, okay. And the next size up for the green traffic light, which I haven't done any green pom-poms, even though I've got green yarn. I had to buy some red pom-pom yarn. And this one needs it just needs trimming. But if, if you've seen the size of this pom-pom on the tiniest hat, it just it's wrong so I went and started to use my smallest pom-pom maker and that's a much better one when I trim it down I'll put it on there it looks so much better so yeah so I would say those two are pretty much almost mm, the crochet one's slightly bigger that one's tiny but at least with all of us doing different sizes we're covering our bases so that's that's the main thing um, God, do you want to hear something stupid? No, something's fine, it's just at me that's stupid. <laughs> so I'm, I'm working these little hats in this yarn, which is, oh, I don't know, Premier. And I've had this for ages, and I didn't mind it when I first had it, but I mind it now because I'm thinking, I don't like feeling this yarn, it's not really, really. Anyway, I didn't have any red pom pom, and any red yarn for pom pom so I went to the shop where we used to do knit and letter and I bought this and it's so incredibly soft it's lovely but I'd have a bit of a an OLD moment we call it my husband and I call it OLD which basically spells old I was I was thinking oh maybe I'll just see if they've got any because they're, they're destocking this now that they're selling it all out and they're not restocking after this but I'll go and see if they've got a white one of these because I much prefer working with that than that, that's not very nice, that's nice um, and I was looking at the yarn label and I thought there's five different fibres in this yarn really? okay and I thought that's, un that's unusual why is there five different fibres in this yarn I mean I know you can get a wool mix and like on that hobby one I've got three different fibres in that one right and I thought oh five different I thought I pulled up Wool Warehouse, Derrimores and Love Knitting and found the yarn and I was thinking it says 100% credit so why has it got five different things in here If you look and you can see it, okay, I hope you can, you will notice that it's 
the same 100 grams but it's written in five different languages and I thought it was different fibres <sighs> okay never mind at least I realise though <laughs> anyway I'm getting a bit tired of doing these baby hats I like them they're cute but I don't want to do them all the time. It's like, you know, at the moment you feel like you're a production line. So I don't mind doing the odd few between projects. And I want to get back to and finish the Tunisian crochet scarf I started on, which is called, I'll show you what I need first. Tunisian ripple scarf by Elisa Purnell. And it's a DK weight yarn. But this one on the picture looks thinner than mine's ended up. So it's going really well and I've had to roll it up so I won't unroll it fully but there is enough for you to be able to see um, and I haven't got much more to go. You know when you, um, it doesn't matter whether you're winding the ball, it doesn't matter whether you're knitting from the outside of the ball, um, your, your yarn still gets all collapsy and sometimes they go funny so I had to do that. Collapsy? What kind of word's that? <laughs> anyway, this is the pattern. I've done that much so far, so it's looking like a Swiss roll at the moment, but this is basically the pattern. It's working out really lovely. Now it looks wider at the top. That's only because it's on the needle, but when as you work up it just seems to cinch in straight. So I'm doing alright and I'm not far off it, but I've got sidetracked with the baby hats and I'm thinking, I'm so done with that now, I want to finish, I want to get back to this and finish this off, because I've been doing this since before Christmas. So yeah, it's time I finish that. So I can move on. I need to do other projects. I do intend on doing more hats with yarn that I've already got. So it's a case of matching a pattern to the what I've got and making it work. I just want to get on with it. And I, I feel stuck. <laughs> but I'll be alright. I'll be alright. I just feel better when this is done. And also, maybe I might be able to finish some whips because I've still got that crochet sideways hat to finish. And there's another couple of things to finish. And I tried to do a couple of socks on the loom, and I just haven't got very far because it's a very slow progress, and I just abandoned them. Oh, something else I've abandoned as well is I've totally. That's it. I'm done. You know that fluffy yarn I tried knitting something and I thought I don't like this I'm going to do corner to corner and I did a little bit corner to corner I'm done with it I'm just totally done with it I, I can't that yarn is horrible to work with it's just difficult I can't see what I'm doing because it's too fluffy so I'm just gonna I don't know if I already did pull the needle out of it I might have already I don't know but I certainly intend to do it that, that yarn is going I'm, I'm, it's not going to be in this house anymore getting rid of it <laughs> Does anybody else feel like that? Like saying, this is, I don't like you, you're going. Yeah. Does anybody else feel like that sometimes? Because I feel like that about that yarn. And then I just want to move on. Bye bye. I can't think of anything else to talk about right now. I think that's everything. I hope everything's okay with you guys as well in the uh, crafting community. And that's it. So I will say bye bye. Take care, everyone. Bye.